Hello fellow orchid lovers, it's Danielle here with an update on my experiment orchids. It's been quite a while uh, since I've given you guys an update on these orchids and they're all doing really well so I wanted to bring you in and just take a hopefully quick look at them. Um, if you'll recall, we had quite a few. Uh, we had one, two, three, four, five, six, and then the vanilla makes seven. So we'll just uh, start off here with the Zygopetalum. She's doing really good. Um, so most of the experiment orchids were orchids that I didn't think I could grow. Either I had failed with them in the past or their particular type of growing preferences, I didn't know if I could satisfy in water culture, uh, growing them hydroponically. So we decided to give them a try, even though I've been avoiding them for a couple years now. And actually, they're all doing really good. So I'm I'm very surprised and actually really happy because I, I was thinking that there were just certain types of orchids that you just can't grow in um, hyd hydroponically and or that you can, but that it's a, a pretty big struggle. And I'm, I, positively, they don't seem that way. So the Zygopetalum, if you'll remember, I got as a, I believe this was a new growth with possibly a new growth starting. I'm not really 100% sure. I probably should have looked at my original video before I started this one, but you can go back and view that if you'd like. Uh, so it was either a new growth with a small new growth or it was just a new growth. It was a seedling. Either way, we look at it, it was a seedling. I, I, pretty much cheaped out on all, <laughs> if except for the pendulum, um, because I didn't want to buy a really expensive plant just to kill it, because I was fairly certain that at least one of these plants was going to fail in water culture. I was wrong, but I didn't want to spend a ton of money and then, you know, basically be throwing money out. So this is a seedling that is a Arthur L. York cross with Blue Blazes Blue Plate Special. So I haven't seen blooms on this one yet. And actually, um, I got it from Hauserman and they didn't have a bloom because it's apparently a cross that they didn't have a picture of the blooms yet. So you kind of have to imagine what that cross is going to look like. That being said, I haven't killed it. So this particular growth grew on, this new growth grew on, and now it has another new growth. Now, the root system's doing really, really well, actually. Um... What I ended up doing with this, based on advice from uh, Michael McCarthy, was um, I took his advice because he grows organically, and I don't, obviously. So I had to kind of take on board what he said about what works for him and see if I could tweak it for how I grow. And it seems like um, that did work because, as you can see, it's not dead, which zygos like to die. So, well, no, they don't like to die. They just you know, you need to know what you're doing. So anyways, um, I didn't know what I was doing, but I took his advice and I tried to apply it to my methods. And, um, you know, we do have some die off of some of the roots, but in a general sense, we, we don't, I don't know. Maybe the light is not good. I'm, I don't know. I'm having trouble seeing it myself because there's a lot of glare on the camera, but as you can see, that's a pretty extensive root system there. Um, you know, like I said, there are a few roots that look like perhaps they haven't made it, but there are quite a few that look like they have. So, and we have more roots coming because we have a new growth. So we did repot this not that long ago because I had potted it wrong in the beginning and it was going to start running out of space. So we repotted it. We put it a little bit farther forward in the cup so that hopefully we won't have to repot it for quite some time. And she's doing good. So that's one plant that I thought I was going to kill that I haven't. So that's good. That's going to be the theme. <laughs> so just get ready for that. This is my Thais. So my challenge with the Thais was I bought it. It was it came to me in moss. I wanted to challenge myself to see if I could grow in organic media because I haven't tried since like, I don't know, four or five years. I haven't tried to grow in organic media and I panicked and I took her out of the moss and I put her, I put her in my method, uh, which again is the glass beads with the microfiber strips to maintain the moisture. 
Um, and she's doing good. I mean, th this is the growth. She was a single bulb when I got her. This was the bulb. It was kind of like this. Um, since then, her leaves have browned and fallen off, which I suppose is what eventually happens with this particular plant. They do just kind of leave behind these bulbs. Um, so this is the newest growth on her. And as you can see, it's it's very healthy, nice and green. Uh, she doesn't typically grow in here. Also, my zygopetalum doesn't typically grow in the grow room. I typically grow them in my master bathroom on the windowsill. It's a northwest facing window, so they only get afternoon sun and they get a fair amount of humidity because it is a bathroom. So whenever you take a shower, there's humidity in the room. Uh, it's also not as hot in that room because it's on the back side of the house. So in the summer, it stays a lot cooler, which the Zygo seems to prefer and this one seems to prefer. So um, yeah, so she's doing really good. I have a bunch of roots in here too. A lot of green, beautiful roots. So uh, I keep the water level a little higher on her than I do on some of my other plants because she seems to enjoy that. As you can see, beautiful new roots. And um, so, yeah, so she's happy too. And I have a new growth coming, I believe. I don't know where they spike from. I think they spike from in between the leaves. So I don't think that that's a spike. I'm pretty sure that is a new growth. But uh, it's, it's a good sign. She's doing really well. She's continuing to put out roots. She's continuing to put out new growths. And there's no massive die-off on her foliage. Whoops, that went very blurry. Sorry, I'm trying, trying. There we go. So I'm happy with that. So she's another one that's doing really good. My Pathio petalums are doing really well. I did put the covering on the outside of their cups because I was worried about the algae buildup. It was getting pretty severe. And I repotted them because of the algae buildup. And the, the masks have really helped. As you can see, there's really not any algae in the cup. This particular plant came to me, this was a new growth and it had an older fan that was kind of dying back that has since completely died back. And this fan has continued to grow on. Uh, they are very slow growers, at least they are for me. So this fan is taking a very long time to mature, but very healthy. I really enjoy this silvery green color of this particular plant. Um, and this is Pathio Petalum Warden. It doesn't look like this one has ever bloomed before. Um, when I got it, the fan that it had did not have an old spike. So I think that this one has not ever bloomed before, but um, you know, there's always a first time. I keep looking to see if there's gonna be a spike, but so far nothing. Hey guys, can you stop making noise? Cause I'm filming, thank you. Uh, that's my Yorkie. You can always you always know when she's coming because you can hear her little ch -ch 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 on the floor. Uh, so that's her. Now the other one that I got, it was um, a tiny fan with this fan, and this fan had an old spike. So I knew that she had bloomed before. But again, I went into this orchid experiment thing thinking I was going to kill everything. So I did not expect it to live. And I never expected it to bloom, but it has. So we have a bloom on my Pathio Petalum the first year that I have it, which I'm shocked by. Very, very happy, but very, very shocked. I absolutely love how hairy this orchid is. I think it's just darling. And I really, really like the hairs on the stem. Um, what can I say? I'm just thrilled. I prefer the color of this foliage um, between the two plants, but I have to say, you know, this one's bloomed, so one up on the other one, right? I just could look at that all day. It's really, really beautiful. And then if you want to know which one this is, uh, this is Pathiopetalum American Beauty. So, yeah, didn't kill it, and it bloomed. So that's pretty good. This is This is where it lives. And this is where this one lives. So they get light from the window because on really bright days, this is south facing. So that's there's a lot of light that comes through this window. And then there's the supplemental <clears throat> lights up there. So it gets a fair amount of light. 
Now, <clears throat> I'm just gonna move them back for a minute here so that I can get to my other experimental orchids. So my other experimental orchids um, is this little darling right here. Some of you may be familiar with this orchid. And then there's also this orchid right here. It's another dendrobium, maybe not so familiar with this one. So this orchid I got, it was just this um, cane that had lost all of its leaves and a new growth. Probably, I don't know, I think it was probably about this big when I got the orchid. As you can see, the new growth has grown on. Sorry, I had to look behind me to see what my dog was doing because it was a weird noise. Um, and it has finished. And now instead of taking a break, it's just putting out another new growth here. Uh, it put out a fair amount of roots. I'm actually pretty impressed with the root system. There is a fair amount of dead roots in the pot though. Um, the root system wasn't the best when I got it. So those roots that were either on their way out or already out are now completely out. So I do technically need to um, take this out of the pot and just trim off some of those dead roots. But I mean, there is a fair amount of roots in the pot. A lot of these roots did grow down and then a lot of them grew on the surface. I am still technically feeding this orchid, even though, you know, it's winter, winter rest, blah, 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 because it's it has a new growth. So I don't want to completely starve the orchid because I want that growth to mature properly. So I am still feeding it. Um, and it's the same thing with the pendulum. The pendulum has also decided it's going to put out a new growth now. So I am still technically feeding it. Um, the water in the cup is just, you know, regular un un fertilized water, but then once a week I do just put a splash of fertilized water in there. Also once a day I come in and I water my telumnias, and when I do that I do kind of spritz these aerial roots to just keep them from drying out completely. Now the pendulum I thought was going to die because it's it's relatively difficult to grow. Um, some people don't struggle with it, but when I did research on this particular plant, it did say in most of the sources that I came across that it is a very difficult plant to grow because it likes to rot. So that's one of the reasons why I decided to do an experiment and see if I could grow it in a way that it would encourage it not to rot. Um, because I think what, what from what I can see is these um, bracts on the, I don't know if that's the right term, but they're relatively deep. And if you grow the plant upright and it gets any moisture in there at all, it rots the cane. I had another one of these and when I got it, it was in a very bad state and it was being grown upright in a pot. And I think that that's what happened is that the water got trapped and it just rotted the plant. This one from the day I got it, I put it so it's hanging upside down. And I think that's the way it's, well, I mean, obviously the name is Pendulum. Um, <laughs> I, um, I think that that's the key to keeping this plant from rotting. So as you can see, the cup is kind of tipped forward and then the plant kind of hangs over the side. Unfortunately, because of the weight of the plant, it did kind of work its way out a little bit, but there are a fair amount of roots that have gone down into the pot. And I think that that has anchored it well enough um, for now. Um, it also does have a fair amount of dead roots in it. So I do have to get it out and take some of those dead roots off but it's doing a lot right now and I'm kind of concerned about disturbing it. So in addition to doing a new growth, it has also decided to bloom. It did bloom for me last year, but I thought it was a fluke because I had just gotten it and I thought maybe, you know, residual care from the nursery caused it to bloom, but it does have nubs. Now, some people might say if it has nubs, you shouldn't be fertilizing it, and that may be true. These may turn into cakeys because I am fertilizing it. I am barely fertilizing it, but I am fertilizing it. I am not, you know, drying it out for weeks at a time. I am giving it regular water. But to me, the more important thing is that this new growth grows on. I want a healthy plant more than I want blooms. So at this point, um, fertilizing it and making sure that that growth grows on and is nice and healthy and, and substantial is more important to me than the blooms. The blooms are gorgeous. I, I loved them. I was very excited. But um, yeah, the plant itself is more important to me. So that's where my focus is. So all of those are doing really well. I'm just going to pan over here and show you the last one. My Latorias are going nuts. I don't know if you noticed that. I'm going to show you the last experimental orchid that is in this particular group, and that is my vanilla. So this is an experiment because I've had a vanilla before, and I killed it. 
Now, to be fair, the last vanilla that I had was a cutting that did not have a very good root system. It had like two roots on the whole plant. And I, I think cuttings are just a little bit harder to establish than an actual established plant, plant with root system. But this time it seems like it has worked. Um, instead of just kind of putting it in water, I did actually do the same thing I've done with all the other experimental orchids, which is, please just give me a moment, okay? Sorry, that's my, she's very clingy. So um, yeah, if I'm not giving her attention 24 seven, she starts to whine, so I apologize. Um, so anyways, when I got this particular plant, I did put it in this method with the glass beads and um, the microfiber. It was about yay long, I think, about this long. It grew a fair amount in my care, and then the growing tips died back. And I was like, oh, here we go. The end has begun. <laughs> I thought for sure that, you know, there was curtains for this one too, because the tips, grew, um, you know, died back. But the root system has stayed very, very healthy, very, very green and continued to grow. It is right by my humidifier, so it gets a fair amount of humidity throughout the day. And it decided to branch. So right here in this joint, if you see one of the leaves, instead of getting a root, it got a secondary vine which is continuing to grow. So that's good. So I don't think I've killed it. Um, I think all signs are good. I'm not growing this for any other reason than I think that it's, I mean, it's really pretty. It's quite a, quite a pretty plant. I, I'm not expecting to get flowers. I'm not expecting anything from this plant other than it just being a nice vine that grows, you know, in the grow room. And it's so far it has not disappointed. And the root system is significant. I mean, you can see, whoops, maybe you can't because that's blurry, but you see all the roots. This did not have this kind of, this is, this is, I grew this, <laughs> she said with pride. Um, I am because I killed the last one. So when something, uh, when I learn from my mistakes and, and I figure it out, I'm very, very proud of myself. So um, yeah, quite an extensive root system that she has grown. So she is a happy little plant. And we will hope that we will keep her that way. So far, all signs are pointing towards we will. So what I would like to do, um, because I am going to make a concerted effort to post more frequently, because um, I do, I have a lot going on in the grow room that I really want to share with you. I just, um, you know, I mean, if you know me and you've been watching my videos, you know my life has been a little horrid lately. Um, but I do still want to post. So what I'm going to, I think I'm going to do, uh, which you can weigh in and let me know, if you like this idea or not, is kind of bring you through my collection by type. So like I'll do maybe an update on my Phalaenopsis. Um, I'll do an update maybe on my Dendrobiums, um, my Vandas, you know, stuff like that, just kind of in groups because I haven't done that in a really long time. Um, I also have a bit going on with my Tolumnias, my Catlias, several of them are in spike or I have new growths or a lot of root porn to show you because there's a lot of really cool roots coming in. So I thought maybe that's what I would do just to try to switch it up a little bit and give you kind of like a, a little snapshot of each group of, of orchids and how they're doing. Um, and, uh, you know, so, so weigh in, let me know if you'd be interested in, in watching that type of video. If you have a suggestion of a type of video that you, um, are interested in, or if there's an orchid that I haven't shown in a while that you would like me to do like a spotlight on, just let me know and I'll, I'll try to do that as well. Um, but in a general sense, um, I have missed talking to you guys and I hope you guys are all doing really well. Um, and I will endeavor to talk to you again soon. But until then, stay well, and I will talk to you all next time.